How's everyone? I'm Aaron Nehera, head of content here at Polar Next. Welcome to our channel. Today, I got to sit down with Adam Hebert, owner of Epic Moment Photography, which is a wedding photography and videography team based out of Colorado. Adam has been beta testing with us since August, and he joins me today to talk about his experiences editing with Polar Next. Now, before we jump into the conversation, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and check out the video description below if you want access to the Polar Next private beta. Adam, what's up? Great to see you. Thank you so much for jumping on this video with me so we can talk about Polar Next and your experience with it. Before we jump into the program itself, I would love for you to introduce yourself to everyone who's going to be watching this video, who you are, what you do, how you got into photography. So I own Epic Moment. Um, we've been around and I'm sorry if I'm not looking at you. You're oh, it's all good. You're over here on my screen and you're over there on the camera. <laughs> it's all good. Um, I own Epic Moment. I've been doing this for about 10 years, do video and photo, mainly mm -hmm. weddings and engagements, but we've kind of expanded since the beginning to and kind of include headshots, maternity, seniors, the whole gamut with cameras. What was like your first camera you picked up and started shooting? Um, so I got a Nikon D7100 mm -hmm. and that was the first camera I'd ever owned. Mm -hmm. Got it for my birthday from my wife. And I can't say she regrets it now, but she might have regretted it at the time because two weeks after getting that camera, I quit going to work and I decided to be a photographer. What? <laughs> Holy <Yeah>. mackerel. <laughs> Yeah, so I just stopped going to work, and that's what I want to do. I was working uh, at a soda company, you know, 70 hours wow. a week, and I didn't enjoy it, so. Wait, okay, we got to unpack this, because, <laughs> I mean, every single, like, you know, photography, channel, business approach, like, everyone tells you don't do that. Like, wait to switch professions until you your income can, like, replace it, but you're just like, whoop. Yeah, uh, I, I jumped into it. I, I can't recommend it. I don't <laughs> recommend it. Yeah, by the end of the year and looking into the following year, I was at the least breaking even point. First year, I think I did 15 weddings. Second year, I did 25. Wow. And I've kind of doubled every year since then up to about 70 that we do now. Wow, 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 wow. And can it, what year was that? When like I when first, started, first started, it was 2015. 2015 when you st first started? But it was Yeah, it was technically started. 2014. I started as rad Adam photography and design, but that mm -hmm. didn't really fit. That didn't really mesh well in the <laughs> wedding world. Yeah. So I changed it to Epic Moment in 2015 and have been that ever since. I like that. I like that. So you jumped in. Can I ask you how much you charged for like your first wedding? <laughs> so I did, uh, I did three. Uh huh. I did two with my cousin for free. Like I made like a hundred bucks or whatever. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> and then I did a third one for free with this guy mm -hmm. in Denver. And after that wedding, he, he said I was ready to go and sent mm -hmm. me on my own with a D7100 and one flash and two batteries. Oh, shoot. He's like, you're good to go. You can solo a wedding. So he sent me by myself to go shoot a <laughs> wedding. Um, so I immediately drank a bunch of tequila and went and shot the wedding <laughs> and did, you know, did phenomenal. I wasn't yeah. like drunk drunk or anything like that. It was more of loosen, loosen the nerves and, and go do it. Yeah. Uh, knocked that wedding out, gave him the files. He turned them in to contests under his name and won the contest. So what? since then, yeah, I had a really bizarre beginning. So since that, that beginning, I was like, okay, I guess I'm good enough to go on my own, started wow. my own business that first year. I think my first few weddings, I was just whatever you can afford. I think I shot yeah. one for $249 and then, yeah, kept going up from there and found a real stable kind of, kind of base at between 15 and 2000 that first mm -hmm. year, first and second year. And then from there, um, went up to, you know, normal industry prices and, yeah. and kind of made a business out of it. Wow. That's awesome, man. There's so much in there. I would love to unpack, <laughs> it's especially the, the, the discussion about drinking while shooting. <laughs> um, yeah, I, d I don't do that anymore. That was, I was very nervous that first one. I had no yeah. idea what I was doing. You gotta yeah. understand. So that was, I was six months into owning a camera at that point. Yeah. 
No, so I man. didn't know how to use a camera. I didn't, I wasn't into photography before that. I was into editing. I edited for mm -hmm. 20 years and then got into wow. photography. Wow. So you have a lot of time and experience under your belt when it comes to post-processing and yes. editing. It's crazy. Yes. When I, when I've thought about the balance between like, like, you know, how much of it is taking photos and how much of it in, is editing, like, I don't know, my my initial thoughts were like 60% editing, almost like 40% shooting in a way. I don't know, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, it's a, it's at least that. I mean, I gotta give some credit to composition and mm -hmm. you know leading lines and the rule of thirds and the golden rule and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, not the golden rule, the golden, what is it, the arch or whatever it's called. Spiral, golden spiral, <laughs> yeah, the, the spiral. golden rule. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you gotta give some credit to that. You do have to have some basic knowledge and, yeah. and then when you get into flash and things like that, then it increases. So I'd say we're closer to 50, 50. Yeah. Um, but without the composition, you can't, it's harder to edit good. Mm -hmm. And without, uh, the editing skills, it's harder to take even a well shot picture mm -hmm. to make it, give it that extra kind of emotion to it. Going back to your editing experience, I mean, to hear that you you had way more experience with editing and stuff like that. What was like the first program you started using with photo editing? Um, with photo editing was definitely Photoshop. And I kind of stayed in Photoshop mm -hmm. for years and years, even before getting to Lightroom. Mm -hmm. So I was more of so my 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 editing skills came from drawing digital comics, inking them and coloring mm -hmm. them digitally in wow. Photoshop. And then, then I got into like, uh, compositions and composite mm -hmm. kind of images and, and things like that. And that's what kind of led me to want the camera because mm -hmm. I was doing more and more composite images. So I wanted to take my own pictures and, yeah. and use those in the, in the composites. Tell us about how it was getting into Lightroom. What was that like? Um, I had been using Adobe so long. Um, mm -hmm. jumping into any other Adobe program kind of feels right. You kind of go, even when you jump into Premiere and After Effects, it kind of, mm -hmm. it's intimidating at first because there's a whole bunch of new tools, but then you kind of like get the hang of it, or at least the tools you need to use. Yeah. As with most Adobe products, they, they have a thousand tools and you need 10 of them. Yeah. So you, you get to those 10 tools and you kind of get proficient at it. It's kind of, it, it's kind of very adaptive to go from Photoshop to yeah. Lightroom. All right. So let me, I want, I want to know what was, what was your workflow like with Lightroom? Say 2019, 2018, 2019-ish. <laughs> what was the workflow like? It was, you know, bring everything into Lightroom. I would call out of Lightroom mm -hmm. and uh, mark them one star if I'm keeping it, five star if I plan to share it online mm -hmm. and then build the one-to-ones and then do the editing, export out of there yeah. and then put it online. Okay. So one star, keep five star. That's the ones you're going to share out yeah, everywhere, like market, mm -hmm. and then call, call through Lightroom, edit through Lightroom and all that good stuff. Yep. And, uh, yeah, that, I mean, that sounds very, very familiar for me. Pretty much 2016, 2017 when I was shooting weddings. 2020 was an interesting year because I was meeting a lot of photographers on Twitch and that was the first time someone told me about photo mechanic and I wasn't aware of any type of, uh, you know, extra culling software or anything like that. I was just culling all in Lightroom and, you know, I was used to how slow Lightroom could be. So I started to venture into, you know, looking at photo mechanic and I ended up with Aftershoot. Did you jump into any type of like AI edit, uh, culling or photo mechanic or anything like that? Um, so we do use photo mechanic now. It's definitely easier to, yeah. uh, call out of photo mechanic and I can mm -hmm. call directly. So when we come after a shoot, we come and we load the, the files up to a, a NAS that's mm -hmm. rated. So all the files get loaded on there and duplicated. And then when it's time to edit, I can, with photo mechanic, I can pull directly from the NAS instead of mm -hmm. loading it back to the computer and calling through Lightroom or anything nice. like that. With that being said. When did, did you start to venture off Lightroom edits, like, you know, editing solely in Lightroom? When did you start to notice any other type of edit programs like Imagine or Aftershoot? Um, so it actually, there used to be one, I think they're still around. It's called shoot.edit. 
You ever okay. heard of them? They may no. or may not still be around, but I think they were, they're definitely before AI. Okay. And that's what kind of like set me in motion to where at some point I knew something mm. would come that's going to really help and yeah. kind of take over a lot of the monotonous things of editing. Yeah. And then uh, after shoot, I never really got into after shoot. I did get into imagine, which is mm-hmm. part of our current process is imagine mm-hmm. and polar. And that's definitely speeds things up. Both of those services speed yeah. up the process. AI is definitely making mm-hmm. its way into the creative industry in, in yeah. all field, in all aspects of it. So, all right. So let's move on to the next bit. I would love to hear your first impressions when the Polar Next team reached out to you. Um, what was it like? Did they did they consult you? Or were they just like, hey, Adam, we love your work. We have this new program we want you to check out. What, what was it like? Yeah, so I still need to ask them how they found me because they're in San Francisco. <laughs> I'm in Colorado. I don't exactly yeah. know how I got in front of them or got on their radar. But um, I think they just shot me an email. We set up a mm-hmm. quick call. Um, they asked if, if I wanted to beta test their software. Mm-hmm. Um, and I said, yes, it sounded fun. It sounded intriguing what they were trying to accomplish. So yeah, jumped on, did a few awkward edits with them. Cause it's yeah. awkward to have like a panel of people and you edit in front of them. It's <laughs> kind of weird. Yeah. And they're just critiquing. They, a lot of times they weren't asking questions and they were just watching me edit and it was kind of weird, mm-hmm. but <laughs> I, I mean, we got through it and then. After a few times, we, we kind of got to know each other and we'd joke around a little more, but yeah. So Bore and Derek, it started with just them two. Yeah. And I think a lady from Australia was in okay. all the calls too. So it was just them three. And then by the time we got to a, a few critiques in, I had a team of eight people watching me. Some of the wow. high, <laughs> high tech guys were like looking at me. You know? So I had like eight people on the screen, just like wow. asking questions or trying to figure out what I'm noticing. That's, that's different than Lightroom or, or what I'm seeing that, I, that I would like fix mm-hmm. and edit it. But my point to that was the whole process of working with them. Everything we've talked about mm-hmm. has been addressed and addressed quickly. They have a very mm-hmm. fast and efficient team. The tools we talked about, the bugs that we saw and discovered on the way, Mm -hmm. um, every single detail so far that, that I have brought to their attention has been rectified in the latest Mm. version. I've used it for about two, three months now, but you know, I'm just sitting here and as you're talking, I'm like, wow. So I'm, I'm editing what you helped to create. Like the iteration that I'm on now is like a lot of your input. And there's just like a few others that, kind of seem like you but you know you really had a you know input on it and when they when they approached me you know and i'm i want to know did they ask you this question like what would it take for you to leave lightroom like what would it take for you to like stop using lightroom and to use a different program yep they did ask that's a that's a big ask (laughs) yeah and so far i'm not there um there's a couple features in lightroom that for what we do i kind of still need or yeah. not need, but it saves time. And that's um, one thing and I think they're working on it is the hotkeys for cropping. I don't know if you use X in Lightroom. So you, yeah. you pull the crop up, adjust it. If you need to change the vertical to horizontal, you just hit X and it changes it and it makes it real yeah. quick, just left hand and knock it out real fast. And the other aspect is is sending things directly into Photoshop so I can like remove a sign or a pole or a wire. Mm-hmm. Um, that one's not that big of a deal. Cause I can still do that just after the fact and take the JPEG yeah. into, into Photoshop. So, yeah, but I agree. Yeah. It's, it's hard. And especially as I've been doing it for 25 years, 30 years in, in yeah. Photoshop and Lightroom. So it's definitely, it's a hard ask to get all the way out of Lightroom. <laughs> Man, I agree. <laughs> uh, well, to follow up on that, what was your reaction when they said that you'd be doing it through editing through Google Chrome? I was fine. I use Google Chrome. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and it makes sense. I think the, mm-hmm. I think the, as more and more people get fiber wire in their house and the internet's faster, there's no reason to have a computer like the one I built that can mm-hmm. handle all the software and all that. Cause you can do it off site just through high speed internet. Yeah. Um, there's video companies, video editing companies now that don't sell you the software. You, it's all done through the web. So yeah, it, I think it's where the future's heading to edit yeah. in a browser. You know, I, I use a big monogram creative console to edit with, and I've been using it since 2019. So my feedback to them again, like with you, 
I need more hotkeys. I need to be able to control everything hotkey wise so I can map it all to my to my console because I feel like I'm, you know, basically, you know, working just with one hand. That's how it feels without my console. But, um, you know, I've been able to adapt a bit. And I think that's kind of like what you said, where the future's headed. It's it's in a way of like, you know, for photographers just getting into it nowadays, like, you know, who knows, maybe they can just start a whole workflow without even like touching Adobe products, you know, and they can do it in a more efficient way. Um, it's pretty crazy. Let's jump into this. We've got your screen pulled up and I'm going to see here. We're going to watch you um, edit through a catalog from from import to the reference and, and so on. So I'm excited. All right. So we probably won't get into the whole thing. I think this one has like a thousand images. So we definitely okay. probably won't. But then I have I have this one saved. That's like 10 images I pulled this morning. Mm -hmm. Gave them an edit. You you said in your notes you wanted 10 of my favorites that I edited in Polar. Yeah. Um, I don't save a lot of the raw files and I don't save. I'd have to go through too much. So I just grabbed 10 new ones and edit okay. those real quick. No worries. But, so you go to create new project, drag your folder in. Just drag it in, hit save changes. And so it's asking you, oh, this is a new one actually, pre-trained AI style. Mm -hmm. Create a new, I always create a new, because yeah. I have my preset that I can load up. And I feel like, especially with weddings, as mm -hmm. you go through the year, seasons are different. So I'd rather retrain the preset that's in there Yeah. each time, because fall's different than summer and everything's yeah. different. Yeah. I got the right one. And these are raws, right? These aren't like DNGs or anything? Yeah, these are raws. So Damn, it's 518. Like so it's only giving <laughs> me one. It's only giving me one reference. Okay. And remember, folks, private beta. <laughs> we are currently in private beta. But yeah, what you've so seen is just one time, reference photo. Last yesterday when I did the engagement, it asked for I think a 10 or 12. So normally I already have the preset in there, but it's really easy to just hit plus and then upload your preset. Mm -hmm. um, and you just get those. If you don't know how to download it out of, out of uh, Lightroom, there's a site called Google. It'll tell you everything you need. <laughs> so click on the preset, loads it up, and then it applies an AI adjustment above that. Mm -hmm. And then you just kind of tweak it. And I have a light like right in my face. So that's going to make editing a little difficult. <laughs> What would you describe your style as? I know there's a lot of words out there. Moody, bright and airy, all that good stuff. What would you say yours is? Um, definitely not bright and airy. Yeah. I, I kind of lean towards, you can see I have like a soft mat. I pull down the whites a little bit in the curves. I think it transfers mm -hmm. over. So I pull down the whites just a little bit and I raise the blacks just to give it a soft mat because I want, mm -hmm. it's a wedding or engagement. So I want it to have that kind of dreamy feel to it. Um, colors are always true to color. If they chose, if this guy chose a pink tie, it should be pink when I deliver him the photos. If he has I suit, fully agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So nobody's, you know, they didn't get married on Mars. The trees are green here. The grass is green. The dirt's orange. Yeah. Like it's, yeah, it has to be somewhat of feels like when you were there, it's easy enough. I look at it as it's easy enough to take a, a true to life edit and mm -hmm. be creative with it after the fact but you can never go take a Mars edit and then bring it back true to life <laughs> the other way. What, one thing real quick, I noticed at the top, there's um, some different buttons up there. We didn't get to do this last time with Alina, oh, yeah. but I'm wondering, could you pop that in full screen? Yep. So, Done. you know, cause you're right. It was showing all your Google tabs, all your bookmarks yep. and things like that. But if you're used to that, like bigger traditional full screen Lightroom, you know, now there you go. <laughs> yep. Nice. Absolutely. Um, so the preset did everything, the presets from Lightroom, all the colors are there, mm -hmm. um, get it to where you want it and then just mark it as a reference. You can hit R, nope, you can hit M, you changed it and it'll mark mm -hmm. it as a reference. Once you do that, it processes all of them starting at the photo where you were at. So we were here, so yeah. it processes around it. So all these colors, by the way, um, this, these images were culled in a, of the program? Yes. Okay. Cold and photo mechanic. Photo mechanic. And it just transfers right over to Polar Next. Yep. 
these were all marked number one, which is red and photo mechanics. So you can see down here, they're marked red. Mm -hmm. If I did a star system or did any other color where I wanted to have some that were for social media or, if, you know, however, whatever rating system or sorting system you want to use, yeah. all of that information transfers over into Polar, which is kind of really nice. So as soon as you start editing anything, it locks the edit. And that yeah. means that if you hit reference again later, it's not going to re-edit that one. Mm -hmm. There's also a couple things that I like to do. So my one of my pet peeves that I talked to uh, Derek about was mm -hmm. forward only processing because I start from top to bottom, left to right, and I just edit. Yeah, I want to know that if I hit reference down at the end, it's not re-editing a bunch of the ones I've already kind of signed off on mm -hmm. before. So I always turn that on. Yeah, that's um, good. Perspective, I don't worry about. Mm -hmm. um, straightening, I leave on. It uh, sometimes kind of nice. I don't like the adaptive stuff because mm -hmm. if I, I do a lot of creative crops, so I don't want AI kind of deciding how to, how to crop it, whether it's 16 by nine or three by one. Mm -hmm. And this is a new one on me. I don't know what this is. Well, I'm so sorry. I'm learning this too, guys. Okay, private beta, <laughs> private beta. But that was the express setup that you went through. It was just the one reference. Um, okay. So now that's comprehensive, I think if you were to upload it again, we don't have to, but if you were to upload it again, it would mark multiple reference photos. So as I go with, with, uh, polar, if you hit an mm -hmm. M, you can mark it as a reference. So if you get his skin tones where you want it, if his shirt's white, um, yeah. and then it readjusts, it reprocesses down the way, especially in this one where I only had the one reference. I'm sure a lot of these are going to need yeah. a little bit of a, an adjustment to it. And just for reference, I see these are Sony files. Are these like 24 megapixel or 48 or what? 24. So this 24. is the uh, 7 Mark IV. Okay. I had an R. I started with an R and I had to upgrade my computer for those files. <laughs> <laughs> nice. They were massive. I, I like how just as you're editing, as you're working, it's just processing in the background. It's just doing its thing yeah. down the timeline and yeah. And it just yeah, it doesn't seem laggy or slow or anything like that. It just seems like it's still smooth. The system itself is is well thought out and mm -hmm. works really, really well. And then it just reprocesses all those, kind of gets the skin tones mm -hmm. a little less. He was a little pink in that one, so I wanted to adjust for that. And he's naturally red. He was just crying, so I yeah, avoid it. Yeah. I deal with that a lot, too, here in Hawaii. You know, I... If it's like an engagement or maternity and the family's visiting from off island, I say, let's let's schedule your shoot like the next day when you come in so you, you're not sunburnt, you know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> towards the end of your stay here. I was gonna ask, is there anything that like Polar Next does that's like more intuitive that you feel than Lightroom? Um, I think one of the best the best aspects of it is the instant feedback. Mm. Things like Things like Lightroom, Lightroom doesn't really have an AI, so you're going back and forth, yeah. or you're looking at the second monitor in the grid and kind of seeing where your colors line up. Yeah. With with um, Imagine or any of the other ones, there you do the edit and then you send it back, and then the next set is mm -hmm. the trained AI. Whereas mm -hmm. with Polar, it's you hit reference and then it's instantly seeing what you're training the AI. So it's kind of like having the AI right next to you and you get to like talk to it basically while you're editing. <laughs> yeah. Hey, fix this, fix that. Compared to, compared to where we started at the very, very beginning when they contacted mm. me to now. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing where we're at. You know, something just popped in my mind when you said, you know, it's like having an AI sit next to you and chat with it. Maybe we should come up with like a mascot or like a, a logo name or something for our AI, you know, we right? should call it a name or something. Like the paperclip from Microsoft a long <laughs> exactly. time Exactly. He'll just like <laughs> pop up or you just see him like come, in, come into view on the screen. And, you know, that'd right. be kind of fun. <laughs> Gives you the, the Stevo finger guns. Like, oh, gotcha. man. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and import a preset. All right. So one of our most common black and white is that one. So when you load it up in... Here, it doesn't make it black and white. Like in Lightroom, it, it is a black and white preset. Yeah. So in Polar, you just need to drop down your saturation and your um, vibrance and then yeah. make your adjustments as needed. But 
So they're not quite there yet, but there's the, their preset black and whites do work just fine. Yeah. For whatever reason, importing the ones don't, but it's really easy to fix and you still get the same mm -hmm. curves. You feel like it's the same. In, in what yeah. So you get the same curves, you get the same, everything you, you okay. need. Um, yeah. So it, it works. It's just a, it's a workaround at this point, but yeah. again, it's beta and it's, it's a, a new problem that I'm sure they will address yeah. immediately like all the rest of it. And for everyone watching, literally, we're going to take this segment. I'm going to show this to the team tomorrow <laughs> and we'll fix it. We'll get right on it. <laughs> and then I believe copy and edit or copy and paste carries everything over. So once you have one black and white, it's really easy to, to do it. Mm -hmm. And then you just don't mark those as a reference. I don't, it would probably really mess with things if you did. The software itself is absolutely amazing. And it definitely speeds up. I speed run through. <laughs> I like, I don't, know how to, I don't know how to, I speed ran, I guess, through <laughs> a, through a wedding once in Luminar or uh, in Polar, not Luminar, mm -hmm. uh, in Polar to, to test like how fast can I run through a wedding and get a decent quality. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't do everything perfectly. I just ran through it as fast as I can. And I was, I did calling and editing in Polar. What? In, in four hours time. A full wedding. Wow. And it looked pretty decent. Wow. Cause I wanted to test like, okay, what, what would happen if I, if I gave the AI a little bit more responsibility in yeah. my company? <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's so funny, man. Cause our, our previous guest, Alina, she's like in, in, in polar next, the AI taught me that I need to learn how to delegate more responsibility to it, you know, to give it more responsibility. So funny that you guys just like hitting on that same note. But the, but the, it, go ahead. It's true. Like you can either, I look at AI as kind of the way film came into the photography world, you know, mm -hmm. our digital came into the film photography world where the people that didn't adapt to the new thing mm -hmm. kind of got left behind. And now they're kind of like this thing that, that, yeah. uh, that it still exists, but it's, it's definitely not yeah. what it should be. You know, I, I was just thinking too, when you said that, that, the possibility of being able to run through a wedding, a full wedding in four hours like that, obviously you wouldn't do that unless you really dialed that in. But even, even if that you spread that out within two, three days, the possibility of turning your delivery times, I don't know what your turnaround times, mine's five weeks, turning it around in one to two is a huge selling point. You know, oh, yeah. like that's, that's pretty amazing too. All right, so you're doing amazing with this. And I like, I just want to sit and watch you, but I know your time is limited. So would you want to pivot to that other project you had or okay. uh, those things? Yeah. Um, so we'll run through. So this isn't uh, another project necessarily. It's just a bunch of photos that I grabbed from a variety of weddings, different yeah. light sources. And you can kind of see how how polar wow. handled it that looks really nice like and that was that's one of those overcast days weird yeah. color and you're able to get like decent skin tones and just this this nice yeah. feel to it before and you close so, that left panel i i noticed the history that you had and i was like oh he it looks like you really <laughs> went to town yeah that yeah the that one for sure the preset wasn't there the second uh -huh. one this sunset was absolutely this is wow. what it looked like. It was wow. a storm coming in right at sunset and just an amazing scene. Um, yeah. So to, to get that from like, that's the raw file Yeah. to the Dang. polar edit, just so I can bring some of that detail back and, and get them into it. Yeah. And you know, you're kind of doing this handicapped in a way too, because I imagine a scene like that, would you play around with the subject mask, like in Lightroom, the AI masking and stuff? Um, yeah, if I was really, really trying to dial it in. I don't yeah. do a lot of that as a wedding photographer with 70 weddings a year. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not spending a lot of time per photo. I can't. Yeah. Otherwise, True. otherwise it's, you know, nine months before I deliver. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's never good. Yeah. Um, so I'll do wow. it on, on a few, like something like these, this one, I wouldn't Sheesh. cause they're blurry. So they're not part of this one's more focused on the mountains itself. Yeah. But it's that same sunset. And that was, that was the scene at this wedding. It was amazing. Wow. 
Um, this is another one, Twin Lakes. Wow. Here's my couple. They're right there. They're teeny tiny, but they look Jeez. cool. Uh, during fall at Twin Lakes and three by one crop is one of my favorite Ooh, crops. Dang. Just, that's like a scene out of Lord of the Rings, my man. Right? It just draws, <laughs> draws the attention to it. Dang. Um, same couple, but same lake, same couple with flash. Yeah. Then they jumped wow. in the water. Yes. Very, I very love cold. that. I love that. <laughs> wow. Uh, this one, one of my favorites, he Dude, built this what? robot. He's an, he's an engineer. So he built the ring bearer as a robot. And it was worked like it, it drove up during the ceremony and lifted his hand to present the ring. It was really cool. That is sick. You know, I hope he continues to update his robot, you know, right. through the years. All of a sudden he's got AI and self-aware and <laughs> here's your baby pictures. <laughs> right. Wow. He could start a business, just rent this out to. Yeah. To people for change for the real. This, wow. a lot of my weddings, this one was in California. Yeah, um, a ceremony on the beach, and then which you're probably used to. For me, mm -hmm. I'm from the mountains, so if I get to the beach, that's amazing. <laughs> so ceremony on the beach, and then reception on a yacht, which wow. we ran into some amazing Dang. sunsets. That is sick. And then this is my backyard. This is Garden of the Gods here in Colorado wow. Spring, mm -hmm. and like something like this, which um, I can go into the masks, which is kind of a new feature for me. Mm -hmm. something like this where I want to like bring in the detail of the rocks. I might have turned that upside down. Nope. That's right. Or you just want to draw that attention to the people. Mm -hmm. Might do something like that. It's something that I would nice. do in Lightroom real quick. And it's super easy to do anymore. Those kind of quick, like there was one on the road that I did yesterday yeah. Um, where I wanted to, the road to kind of get darker out front and then bleed into them and get brighter mm -hmm. where they were at. Um, previously was not available in Polar, and now it is. Um, just another fun. The nice sweating shot. was a blast. I like that. And then they threw the groom in the Oh, air. dude, that's a sick. I like that. Oh, that's a money shot. That's a nice. scary, <laughs> that's a scary, <laughs> scary thing to do, but they were into it. I'm going to do that my next big bridal party. That's what I'm going to do next. Yeah, it's fun. If they're inspired by if they're the right couple, yeah, throw it up there. Sick. Ooh, that's pretty. Nice. And then last one, same wedding, right at sunset. Wow. And I gotta ask, how was it dealing with the highlights in this shot? Um, it was fine. Like it's it's so close to to Lightroom mm -hmm. that it's impressive from, um. I don't think most people would even notice a difference between using this and using Lightroom. Yeah. I notice a difference because they, they contact me at beta. So I know where they started yeah. and where they're at now. So I understand the steps that we've gone through with mm -hmm. me and all the other photographers they interviewed, um, to get to this point, but they are to the point now where it's, it's the same as Lightroom. Wow. As far as I'm concerned. It's There's a there. few of the tools that are, that aren't there, but it, those are tools that you don't really use that much anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, I know chromatic aberration, which I don't think I have any images with that mm -hmm. was an issue. They either fixed it or it will be fixed soon. Yeah. That's a, that's another tool I noticed that kind of wasn't there. I'm always used to like clicking it. Um, but yeah, I agree. Because it comes up every now and again. You'll get the high mm -hmm. contrast in the branches, and you need to. You can't just leave a purple tree there. You have to fix yeah. it. So that might be one you you throw into Photoshop. But yeah. most most images, all of these are fine. That the wedding that I'm editing on the other project, mm -hmm. once those are done, those are those are sendable to clients and and good to go. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you for taking the time to to show me you know, that catalog you're editing through and then these images here. And I like the point that you put out that like at the end of the day, when you deliver to your clients, they're not going to ask you what program you use. They're just going to look at the quality of it. And that's why when they I was telling um, another photographer this, but they asked me like, when would I consider paying for it? And I was like, well, first off, let me make sure I have the money. But second, you know, <laughs> I, this is right after I delivered to the client and they gave me that feedback that they loved it. I captured everything they wanted. They didn't know I edited it in Polar Next, 
you know, they just saw the result. And to me, that was like, I would have paid for that. You know what I mean? Like if I can deliver results that get that, you know, from my clients, it's worth paying for that. And yeah, technically, you know, there's a lot of tools missing or that you're not used to because of your old workflow with Lightroom, but you know, they will get there. You know, it's just a matter of when, cause we're still in private beta and then it's still pushing it out. Um, this has the potential to, for me at least to, to just get me out of Lightroom. Like, like I understand like you, like I'll still have it on my computer and I use Adobe Premiere and Photoshop after effects it'll be there and I'll probably still edit with it when I'm doing my personal stuff because, you know, at the end of your editing, you do have to export it with credits and pay for it. So, you know, I'll have Lightroom to, to, you know, I have it, but when it comes to weddings, when it comes to your 30, 40, 50 wedding season, for, you know, a year 70 for you, something like this is definitely going to help alleviate all that monotony and just, let you focus on other aspects of your business. Just like imagine just like after you promise and this and that, I just love the full creative control that you can have on your images before you hit export and spend those credits. You know what I mean? Versus we are kind of like pay up front in a way, but yep. any final thoughts? I thank you for your time. It was, it was a really good conversation. Um, no real final thoughts. I mean, we kind of covered it all polar. Yeah. I, I think this, whether it's polar or, or another AI thing, but I, I think polar is ahead of the game because they actually listen to, mm -hmm. uh, when they reach out for feedback, they actually listen and act on it, which is mm -hmm. fantastic. And that's what I think got them this far is, is talking to hundreds of photographers or however many they did and hearing their direct feedback of what they need in this type of service and listening and then accomplishing those quickly is is going to put them on top um and then they're priced right too they're yeah. in comparison they're half the price of the service i use yeah well i gotta say adam if you've thought about doing youtube and stuff before i think you should <laughs> you did really good and i love like the ex expertise experience you have to bring to the table i even learned a bit and your work is just incredible, like a really lovely to look at. So you should definitely share more of it. I'd love to, love to see it. And Thank by you. the way, for those who are watching, how can people find you and like, where, where are you? Where are you on the social media verse? Um, we're on most of them, mostly Facebook, Facebook as Epic Moment and mm -hmm. Instagram is at this Epic Moment because the other one was taken for some reason. <laughs> um, and then the website itself, you can go there and go to Epic Moment, Epic X and Epic 365. Those are the three companies. And if you want Epic gear, go to coloradoicons.com. Shoot, man, I might have to gear. grab one of those hoodies. <laughs> those are sick. I like it. <laughs> There's um, one that the back says my life is dope. So you can get the oh, combination of it all. <laughs> the only thing is, is just I never wear jackets out here, man. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> if you get a flannel, maybe a flannel. I'll rock a flannel. But <laughs> all right. jackets are hard to rock out here. But. Adam, dude, I thank you so much for your time sitting down with me and getting all this set up so we can make this happen. Um, you know, I know the Polar team is super grateful for all the time you've invested and in the support and the feedback that you've given. And I sincerely hope that like, you know, the product that 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 we push out in the, in the future, in the next couple of months is going to be something that like are up to your standards and that you enjoy and like, because, you know, that's that's the hope for this project is that photographers is going to be very, very helpful and um, beneficial for you guys. And for myself too, I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm wanting right. to use this for myself, but. It, yeah. it, Polar is definitely already up to my standards as far as workflow and delivery. It's already there. And that's, yeah. I've been editing for 30 years and this kind of simplifies the whole process and takes a wealth of knowledge and just puts it into a simple, easy solution. Mm -hmm. I think anybody who's who's just starting out, if you had the choice between learning a program like Lightroom and going with a route like Polar, Polar is the way to go because mm. that's where the future's headed. And they're only going to get better. They're going to have the remove tool. They're going to have everything you need to to finish an image from start to finish. So 
it might as well get in at the at the ground level and go from there. I didn't pay this band to say that, guys. Just straight up. <laughs> I did not. So maybe I promised them a couple matches on Valorant. I don't know. But uh, yeah, <laughs> thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, I want to thank you, everyone. I thank Adam for joining again uh, me on this video. And I hope everyone who was watching, we are releasing our private beta code for you to try this out. So the link and everything is going to be in the description. You go to next.polar.com in the top right, you'll see access beta and the code is next big thing. And you guys can jump into the private beta today. Check it out, see how you like it and jump back to this video and write in the comments. What do you think about the program? If you have any questions or anything like that, we'll definitely get back to you. So Adam, thank you so much. We'll thank see you, you later, man. All right, later. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Adam. If you would like to try out Polar Next for yourself, head to the description below and you'll find the link as well as the access code next big thing to try out Polar Next while it's still in private beta. Test it out. We love to know how you like it. Comment down below. If you enjoy this type of content, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe so you can stay connected with all things Polar Next and we will see you on the next one.